Hey guys, so I did a short video about the ISRO, um, one thing that was just like to share um, to react and to share to one of their victories um, and um, my friend sent me another video about it um, this is comparing ISRO with NASA. Now the thing is what I think about NASA is that um, I think that some of the money they have is not, they're not like putting it to research and stuff. They're just like spending money on publicity. Um, you can get the NASA logo on like almost everything, cups, shirts, um, hats. I can go right now to the market and get um, something who has NASA logo on it. Um, so a lot of the things NASA is doing is basically to promote themselves and not to do, you know, the research and the stuff they're doing. Um, so yeah, I think this is why people are hearing more about NASA and less about ISRO. Um, but my friend sent me this video who has a little bit more, like also comparing them but giving a little bit more information about the Indian space program. So that sounds very interesting. This video is supported by Brilliant. Hey, welcome back, I'm Lai. On this channel, I've talked a lot about technology and business space companies. I've talked about national agencies like NASA, ESA, and Roscosmos. I've also talked about private companies like SpaceX and Rocket Lab. One way, entity I've refrained to talk about um, is ISRO, in the, the Indian Space Research Organization, simply because it's really hard to pigeonhole ISRO. Yes, it is a traditional national agency, much like NASA of the United States, but it's also at the same time extremely cost conscious and result oriented like a startup. Its launch price is almost as competitive as SpaceX. So let's talk about That's it today. Cool. Where does ISRO really fit in and what makes it so special. First of all, it is not fair to compare ISRO with other space agencies because ISRO has never possessed the ambitions or the fundings like the other space agencies. NASA's budget each year is $18 billion, $7 billion for European Space Agency, $3 billion for the Chinese and the Russians. ISRO's budget each year is only $1.7 billion. Think about it. Oh, wow. With okay. $285 billion cash reserve, Apple could have funded ISRO with cash for 167 years. That is how little ISRO spends every year, and that is why comparing ISRO with NASA... They're not spending money on stuff or not However, important. However, this job. is not to say that ISRO has not achieved extraordinary results. It has. Two of the most successful launches of ISRO is the PSLV C-37 in 2017 and the Mangoyan in 2013. PSLV C-37 until this day holds the record for launching the most satellites in a single rocket and Mangoyan successfully helped ISRO to become the fourth country to orbit Mars, even before yeah. the Chinese. But none of really? the aforementioned achievements comes close to what ISRO has spent for both missions around 70 million dollars each Whoa. this i think reflects the core philosophy of isro which is to be ambitious but at the same time cost effective in the 1960s the soviet union and the united states competed fiercely in the space industry which eventually accelerated the collapse of the soviet union and now the chinese are catching up with the americans not to compete with NASA this time, but the Chinese are not going to be anyone else's lackey either. Therefore, while other space agencies compete to make the most powerful rockets in the world, ISRO never seemed to care about that. Just look at the evolution of its rocket launchers. They're all humbly named satellite launch vehicles. Different variations indicated by the first this letter so represent They're different like orbit. PSLV for polar synchronous doing, orbit to, you know, and GSLV for geosynchronous orbit. This is the first clue of how pragmatic than else. They're ISRO actually trying is. To make, the second you know, clue is in its resolved. vehicle design. If you take a closer look at ISRO's rocket evolution, it looks almost like SpaceX. The only difference is that ISRO has a more stable financial support from the Indian government and SpaceX mm -hmm. had none. But in terms of the approach to design launch vehicles, 
Both organizations are very similar. SLV and ASLV was initiated in the 1980s, and ASLV's capability is similar to that of Falcon 1. The three versions of PSLVs have similar capabilities comparing to early versions of Falcon 9, and the GSLV has capabilities somewhat catching on to Falcon 9 Block 5. None of them could be classified as a super heavy lift launch vehicle like Falcon Heavy and Saturn V, but they're all super reliable and most importantly, very cost effective. What's more impressive about the evolution of ISRO's launch vehicles is their adaptability. Take PSLV as an example. It has three versions, PSLV-CA, which stands for Core Alone, Standard PSLV, and PSLV-XL. Well, all of them focus on polar synchronous orbit, which is around 600 kilometers altitude. Customers can choose which variations of vehicles to use based on the size of the satellite. This is the beauty of a cost-effective launcher. Furthermore, because of its focus on cost-effectiveness, ISRO also has to come up with brilliant engineering solutions to the problems it faces. One famous example is its experimental mission to Mars. On top of being the only successful Mars mission on the first try, ISRO had to perform six orbit raising maneuvers over three weeks before heading to Mars. Because the vehicle does not have enough power like the Falcon Heavy to send satellites directly to Mars, it slowly raises the satellite's orbit before injecting it successfully to a heliocentric orbit to Mars. The engineering and the problem solving behind it like is truly amazing. Fast. This, I think, captures the essence of ISRO's success. As the founding father of ISRO, Vikram, used to say, there are some who question the relevance of space activities in the developing nation. To us, there is no ambiguity of purpose. We do not have the fantasy of competing with the economically advanced nations in the exploration of the moon or the planets or manned space flight. But we're convinced that if we're to play a meaningful role nationally and in the community of nations, we must be second to none in the applications of advanced technologies to the real problems of man and society. I think this is the key to understand what ISRO stands for and how it differs from other space agencies and companies. This is also why I said at the beginning, it is really hard to pigeonhole ISRO. It didn't have the fundings that NASA had, it didn't have the startup mindset and institution that SpaceX had, but none of this stopped ISRO from doing something extraordinary. This just come to show how important passion and dedication is for any organization. You know, talking about ISRO makes me really happy because it's clearly made out of people who are passionate, dedicated, and above all, an institution that encourages it. Looking forward into the future, I think ISRO will continue to do great things. It's setting out to perform its first manned mission in 2022. I'd say good luck to ISRO. See, this is another reason why I love India. It's not just like about, like they're not being cheap, they're just being smart. They're thinking about what we are like what we try to accomplish here and how can we not be part of this crazy um ridiculous competition um like when the satellite had to like fly several times until get like until there will be in the in mars it's not i know like so many other like companies who will immediately fly and then stuff will destroy it and people will die and they will feel like in shock like how did this not work but they're not using their brains they're just like trying to be um the best in everything and the fastest in everything and this is something that india is doing so much better um to actually think about what you are doing um and to make sure that what you are doing will be successful not just like yeah, we launch like a rocket to space. We can do it now. Yay us. But they're like, yeah, we'll launch a rocket to space because we want to see if ABC, like it's not just like we want to see if we can do it. Like we have an actual purpose. So that was very inspiring and really cool to see how much India um, became from like, it looks like a really small company, but at the same time to, to know that they did everything they can to build those programs and to make sure the rockets and the missiles who by the way doesn't look like all this fancy equipment and stuff it's not 
Like, they're trying to make it functional and make it work, not make it, like, looks pretty, like, for the camera or something. They're actually focusing on what they're trying to achieve. Um, this is great. I love, this is, again, one thing I love about India. And to learn about this space program, who is, don't have, like, all the money the other space programs get because... First of all, I'm assuming um, India is not part of the space war, the crazy war we actually have right now that everyone is trying to get to Mars, everyone is trying to conquer another stars and like to declare it as their own and India is just like chilling behind them just like, yeah, we came to investigate and to see how this can affect our people and how this can actually be a good thing for us. If it's not, it's cool. We don't want to like... We don't want to be the rulers of the galaxy or something like things um it's really funny because india has so many people and um well russia and china and usa also have a lot of people but i'm assuming that um they're so hyped up about it they're always like talking about nasa and stuff and the indian people are just like oh yeah and we also have this so this is also like there's a lot of scientists and a lot of cool stuff behind this, but they're also keeping it like really humble. So yeah, really interesting. Those space programs, um, especially all the all the stuff they made and the last video I've seen about it, I reacted to um, was like um, the ISRO um, working with the US. Um, it just like, again, to see how much um, to see how much India does not care about being the best and stuff. She's just like, we want to see if we can help people. So, hey, USA, do you want to be part of this? We can join force and make something better, not just like, you know, be number one at something. It's really cool to see how India is not into all this um, space drama stuff. Um, yeah, so good job, India. Thank you for sending me this video um, and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.